On today's Live Open Daily, there are a number of PlayStation VR 1 games that are considered classics by that community that never made it to PlayStation VR 2. Games like Astrobot Rescue Mission, Farpoint, Blood and Truth, and I could go on and on. In today's episode, we're going to look at each of those games. There's nine in total. Look at the state of those studios behind those games and why those games never made it to PlayStation VR 2. I'm your host, Live Open Mike, and I personally do not own the PlayStation VR 1 or 2, but I was really curious because I've been following the development of that headset from afar and that whole ecosystem from afar. And I was really curious why these games did not pour it over. Everyone knows when PSVR 2 came out, actually before PSVR 2 came out, it was known that it would not be backwards compatible with PSVR 1. There's a bunch of reasons for that. The different controller schemes, totally different technology. Those headsets are several years apart and the port process will have to be handled on a studio by studio basis. We've seen a lot of third party developers actually port their games from PSVR 1 to 2. Some of them did it for free with a free upgrade available if you already own the original game and some of them did charge for that. Let's start with Farpoint. Farpoint was a first person shooter VR game based on an alien planet. This game was made by a company called Impulse Gear and published directly by Sony. Impulse Gear's follow-up game after this was a game called Larsenos. This was a hero shooter in the vein of something like Overwatch and that game basically flopped. Uh, the problem with that game was when a bunch of content creators got early access to it, every single one of them, you go back and watch videos, just search Larsenos, pointed out a ton of different problems with the game, um, a multitude of reasons. There were like button reloads and a whole bunch of different things that just weren't good about it. Now Larsenos was patched about two weeks later to address almost every single problem that every content creator pointed out. But by then the writer was on the wall, the game was dead in the water. The reason this relates back to Farpoint is because since their next game flopped, Impulse Gear has not released a single game. And if you look at their website at the very top, there's a full statement here and I'm going to read the whole thing and you can just kind of read between the lines. Founded in 2013, our studio is composed of veteran game developers from AAA VR, console, PC and mobile game industries. The core team has over 50 years of experience developing some of the biggest titles at EA, Sony Interactive, Ubisoft, and 2K. With virtual reality becoming a reality, the co-founders of Impulse Gear decided that the time was right to start an independent studio dedicated to the new medium. Virtual reality enables a new level of immersion and interactivity, and the team was excited to be at the forefront and helping to define what virtual reality gaming would become. Our first title, Farpoint, did just that. Here's the money line. We are now focused on developing original AAA game experiences on all platforms while continuing to explore what VR has to offer. Our sole mission is to develop the best original AAA game experiences and have fun doing it. Read between the lines there, they're basically saying we're keeping an eye on VR. You've seen similar statements from companies like Ubisoft. They're basically saying we're keeping an eye on VR, but we're not going to be exclusive to it. Larsenos was their last game. They have not released a game since. My presumption is their next game is going to be something that they do on flat screen, maybe with a VR mode or hybrid mode, but they're not focused solely on VR development. Larsenos launched before PlayStation VR 2 launched and the flop of that game probably pushed them in a different direction and away from the VR medium, which is why Farpoint likely did not make it to PSVR 2. Impulse Gear was already out of the market at that point. Next up is Blood and Truth. This was another first person shooter where you control a character named Ryan Marks. Blood and Truth was made by a developer named London Studio who operated under Sony directly. London Studio was actually closed by Sony in May of this year. Their last game that they collaborated on was a flat screen game called Erica. They worked on that with another studio and they were said to be working on a big AAA experience, but it was not meant to be in virtual reality before that studio closed down. Wipeout Omega Collection is a series of remasters of some of the original Wipeout games that debuted on like the earlier PlayStation consoles. This game was made by actually three different studios, a company called XDev, Clever Beans, and Creative Vault Studios. This was the first game in the Wipeout series not to be made by the original developer Studio Liverpool. That studio was closed by Sony in 2012. This one was a little bit hard to research because I had to look up three different studios, but going through all of their resumes and run down the games, we'll start with XDev. XDev is a studio that has actually never released a full game by themselves. They have always worked on other games with other companies. Their other projects are games like Detroit Become Human and Rise of the Ronin. Again, they just kind of helped to get those games over the finish line. They were not the primary developer. Near as I can tell, the VR part of Wipeout Omega Collection was done by Creative Vault Studios. Their only other game that they have listed is a PlayStation 1 VR game called Hustle Kings VR. That is a game of billiard slash pool. Wipeout Omega Collection is their most recent project. They don't have anything else listed on their social medias, on their website. There's absolutely nothing there. I can't even tell if the studio is actually still in business. 
and the last studio clever beans again they don't really look like they have a connection to vr clever beans is the only game since wipe out the maker collection is a game called gods will fall that was on playstation 4 it is a roguelite arpg near as i can tell creative vault did the vr conversion for that clever beans does not have a background in vr and again creative vault hasn't done another vr game since or any game since there's nothing else listed on their resume Probably the most popular game on this list is Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. This one came from Capcom. It's only actually played for this campaign to be playable exclusively in VR for PlayStation VR 1 when the game first launched in 2017. For PlayStation VR 2, Capcom has done two VR conversions, one for Resident Evil Village, that's Resident Evil 8, the sequel to this one, and for Resident Evil 4 Remake that came out this past December, several months after the Resident Evil 4 Remake originally launched on consoles. This one could be a case of a couple of things. Number one, Sony's footing the bill for these conversions. They already had Resident Evil 7 done. And since Resident Evil 4 was the most recent entry in the genre, it made more sense to pour their resources into paying Capcom to port that version into PlayStation VR 2. Same thing for Village. Those were the two most recent Resident Evil games. It made more sense to do those as opposed to a game that came out at the time about six years ago. It's estimated that about 100,000 people play Resident Evil 4 Remake in VR since that game's release, or since that mode's release, excuse me. That's a very, very small number compared to the number of PSVR 2s that have sold, that's less than 10%. And it's also a really small number compared to the number of people who have played Resident Evil 4 Remake, period. So just looking at the raw percentage numbers, if less than 10% of your base, because there's been well over a million PlayStation VR 2s sold, if less than 10% of your base has played this VR mode for two Resident Evil games, does it make sense for Sony to pay Capcom? to go back and port Resident Evil 7 again? Probably not. Next up is a Till Dawn Rush of Blood. This was an on-rails shooter. You're actually on a roller coaster going through a bunch of spooky locations and shooting everything that comes at you. It's meant to be a spinoff of Until Dawn and it was very well received on PlayStation VR 1. For PlayStation VR 2, instead of going back to Rush of Blood, they decided to release a separate game called Switchback VR. When Switchback VR released, the response was not as kind as I'm sure Supermassive and Sony were hoping for. There was a lot of criticism about the graphics, about things looking blurry or low texture. There was a patch a few months later that did fix that, but this is one of those you only have one chance to make a first impression kind of situation where if the game was not well received and wasn't well reviewed, probably didn't sell well once the reviews came out. And even though they did fix the game later, how many times have you seen developer fix a game but fail to get the traction and get players back interested in it? For every game like a No Man's Sky or a Cyberpunk, there are literally hundreds if not thousands of games that fix their problems later and then get people back into the game. If you go back to YouTube right now, you don't see a lot of people revisiting Switchback VR to say, oh yeah, they fixed it. I personally can only find three different videos. So coming back to something like Russia Blood, again, this is one of those deals where if Switchback VR did not do well for them, are they going to pay super massive to go back and then pour the PSVR 1 game up to PSVR 2 and then probably take the PR hit because they would want to charge for that as opposed to offering it as a free upgrade. Supermassive has since worked on a new remake of Until Dawn that will be on PlayStation 5 later on this year. We found out about that at the most recent Sony State of Play. This one's pretty simple. Dreams was a game creation kind of sandboxy environment where users can go in and create their own separate games or musical assets or video assets or just worlds for players to come in and check it out. Very similar to other sandboxy social experiences like VR Chat, Rec Room, Neos, Riff, Resonite, Meta Horizons. There's a ton of these things out there. Generally, Sony has been pretty conservative about having user-generated content on their platforms. If you look at the rest of PSVR 2's lineup, you don't see other sandboxy environments. You don't see Rec Room on there. That team said that it didn't make financial sense for them to port to PSVR 2. You don't see VR Chat over there. That's one of the biggest social experiences in the world, but somehow they're not coming over to PSVR 2. Again, Sony has been a little bit more tightly controlled about how much user content you can get on there. Support for Dreams was ended by Sony in September 2023. This was a month before Sony laid off approximately 900 people across their video games division, including Closing London Studios, a studio we talked about earlier. Media Molecule reportedly was on the chopping block to be closed entirely, but instead they closed London Studio instead. If you look at statements on their website and social media, they talked about keeping their team lean. And when they laid off those 20 employees, they want to keep their headcount under about 30 people this isn't really something surprising uh hideo kojima's company kojima productions does the same thing they have a very small team but if you're trying to maintain a sandbox environment with all these user created worlds there's a lot of moderation and regulation that comes with maintaining something like that companies like vr chat are going through that right now where they don't really have this economies of scale the number of employees to maintain something like that 
if they're gonna run a small team, maintain the sandbox environment doesn't really work. So this, like almost every other game on this list seems to be like a victim of a business decision. I don't see dreams coming to PSVR 2 because the team is not large enough to support it. Next up, Iron Man VR. This game was made by a company called Camouflage Studios. It dropped on 2020. Camouflage has since been acquired by Meta. Meta bought them in 2022 and then ported Iron Man VR over to the Meta Quest platform. Camouflage is currently working on a Quest exclusive game called Batman Arkham Shadows set in Batman Arkham Universe. Batman is scheduled to come out later this year, but since Camouflage is now currently owned by Meta, I don't see Iron Man VR ever getting the PSVR 2 port. Doesn't really make sense for Meta to do that. Then there is Firewall Zero Hour, made by First Contact Entertainment. This was heralded as the best competitive shooter on PlayStation VR 1. Instead of porting Zero Hour to PSVR 2, instead FCE decided that they were going to make a sequel called Firewall Ultra. There was a massive amount of hype around this game. We were seeing video teasers on social media about being able to like control your weapon wheel and thus change your weapon using eye tracking. There's going to be eye tracking for grenade throws. Uh, it's going to take advantage of all the technology on the PSVR 2 and the PlayStation 5 to bring you like the best graphics and the best possible experience. Players seem to be okay with leaving Zero Hour behind knowing they're going to get a brand new game taking advantage of all the new technologies. And then Firewall Ultra released and it flopped miserably. There were a ton of different problems with the game. Started with button presses for reloads as an example. You had to use eye tracking like an eye track gaze to throw a grenade. Some of the eye tracking was a little bit clunky to switch your weapons. And basically it just felt like a flat screen shooter translate to VR without all the proper VR mechanics that you would expect. A few months after Firewall Ultra dropped, First Contact Entertainment announced that they were shutting down completely and cited a lack of support in the VR community, basically saying that the game did not sell well enough for them to continue. Last game is Astrobot Rescue Mission, and this one is the one that probably hurts the most. A lot of people said that Astrobot had its origins in VR. That's not entirely true. Astrobot was originally made by a company called Japan Studio, more on them in a second. Astro itself was first introduced as part of the Playroom, which was a mini game demo originally on PlayStation 4. Astro originally debuted on the Playroom, which was a collection of mini games available for the PlayStation 4 in 2013. It was basically a demo disc. That's where Astro was first introduced. Japan Studio then released their Playroom's VR for PlayStation VR 1, and that's where Astro got a lot of its popularity and spun off into Astrobot Rescue Mission in 2018. After Rescue Mission was released, Japan Studio was actually closed. The entire Astrobot team was separated off and formed a team called Team Asobi, still working under Sony. Meanwhile, the rest of Japan Studio, which worked on games like Knack, Shadow of the Colossus, and Gravity Rush were all let go. Rumors started spreading that Team Asobi was working on a new Astrobot game and that was debuted at the Sony State of Play, but we knew ahead of time, or at least there were rumors ahead of time, that Astrobot for PS5 was not gonna have PlayStation VR 2 support. Nicholas Doucette, who is the head of Asobi Studios, released this statement. We're focusing 100% on PlayStation 5. Rescue Mission was great fun to make. Every medium has its strong points. In the case of a third person game, whether you work on TV or VR is radically different. This idea we could add a VR mode is not applicable to this type of game. It's applicable to some first person games like racing, but not for this type of game. So our choice was to go 100% for TV to really have as many people as possible playing this game. Certain games can afford to be hybrid like first person games because there's a closer similarity, but in our case, the design philosophy for both are very, very different. So you know, it was a decision to expand on the world of Astro's playroom and bring Astro to the big stage. So from the very beginning, that was really our focus. Read between the lines there and they basically said, when they said have as many people play the game as possible, they were talking about PlayStation 5's install base, which is over 50 million, as opposed to PSVR 2's install base, which is over a million. I've actually heard a hair over 2 million at this point from a couple of developers, but I can't confirm that. So you're looking at the number of people who would attach to that game, and it's going to be great on PlayStation 5. This is a massive bummer. Astrobot is heralded as probably the best PlayStation VR game ever made. So the fact that it's not coming to PSVR 2 just flat out sucks. The new heads of Sony, the new CEO, don't really seem to be big believers in VR. So even though they have a bunch of developers like Fire Sprite, which went through a bunch of layoffs, they're the makers of Horizon Call of the Mountain, like Insomniac Games, they're currently making Spider-Man games and raking in a bunch of money for that, even though they just went through layoffs. So I just wanted to take a look at each of those nine games. Honestly, instead of a PSVR 2, I'm probably gonna end up at some point picking up a PSVR 1 and trying to play some of these classic games on my own because I know I'm not going to get them on PSVR 2. 
that's a wrap for this episode of the live open daily podcast this episode did come out a day late i'm gonna apologize for that i had a major issue recording and it was too late to re-record the entire thing because my original file was corrupted but that's gonna wrap up week three thank you so much for checking it out you can get this podcast and my other podcast the xr remix podcast on all major vr platforms iheart apple music youtube spotify and check me out on twitch i stream vr there multiple days a week i'm at live open mic thanks and i'll talk to you on monday